I am going to introduce um, some of you might have noticed that there's a couple new people here. Uh, so just over to one side of me is, uh, so that's, uh, I have to point, how do I point properly? In black, that is Ray. Ray is my oldest. Ray currently is living in Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, they're muted. And Clarissa is in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, right? So we have, uh, and uh, Clarissa wants to cook some steak fried rice today, right? And I'm also going to be making uh, some fried rice, vegetable fried rice and uh, pork fried rice here in Detroit. And I'm just turning on some fire and um, also going to be making satay, which I like to think of as porksicles. So Indonesian style pork uh, on a stick. We're going to be making the fried rice, and we're also going to be making some gado gado, which is, uh, well, it's a salad, but it's really an excuse to eat uh, peanut butter sauce, spicy, savory, sweet peanut butter sauce. So um, that's that's what we're going to be working on today. Uh, I'm going to start off first by showing you guys a quick video of the prep that I did for uh, getting the saute underway, and then I'm going to do some stuff hopefully quietly in the in the background as this video plays. So you get to see a different version of me uh, preparing the marinade as I did two nights ago. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of prep ahead of time. In this case, we're going to be making the marinade for the uh, pork saute, pork skulls. Um, so anytime you're making um, a marinade like this, the easiest way for me to remember it has always been that I want to have something sweet, something sour, something salty, and something spicy. And when you take all of that together and a little bit of salt, then you have the five S's that you need for any marinade. I said salt twice. Dressing, that sauce, stupid. et cetera. <laughs> that you need. So I'm going to start with uh, ketchup manis. Ketchup manis is a Indonesian style, also Malaysian style soy sauce. And it is a sweet soy sauce. You can't see it in this bottle, but take a look at this bottle right here. This is some of it decanted. Look how thick that is and how it wants to cling to the walls, that's because there's a high sugar content in here. Um, I don't know exactly what the sugar ratio is, but if you compare that to a regular soy sauce, so if this is, uh, this is a Korean brand, but if you had Kiko Man or something like that at home, you would see a very thin sauce, not a lot of legs to it, not really clinging to the bottle because it doesn't have very much sugar. And then you take that compared to the ketchup manis, very thick, very dark, and it's going to be a little bit more syrupy. Um, super scientific like, I am going to, for the amount of pork shoulder that I'm marinating right here, I figure I'm going to put probably about a quarter cup, maybe even a third of a cup of the sweet soy into this container. Um, my mom told me that I should use something like, um, she likes to use sherry in order to be um, also helping thin that marinade a little bit and also increase how much it wants to soak into the meat. Um, today I have a little bit of sochu, which is a Korean um, kind of like sake. And that was probably about, let's call that a tablespoon. And I'm also going to add a tablespoon of some rice vinegar. That's going to be my sour. So I have my sweet from that sweet soy sauce. I have my salt because there's already salt in soy sauce. I add the sour from the vinegar as well as from the um, soju. I'm going to add a little bit of spiciness. This is a chili garlic sauce uh, by Hoi Fung. They're the same guys that make that sriracha that you probably have heard of. It's a chili garlic. I'm going to call that also probably close to a maybe two teaspoons full. And this is a little bit of ground coriander. This is uh, coriander is cilantro seed that's been dried and toasted. And we're going to add some of that. And that way we're making um, saute ketchup. Um, Bobby Manis, I think. Right, so I'm adding a ton of that. Let's make life simpler. Add some of that. And drop the lid in there. That's always good TV, Eric. Oh. And then we're going to mix that That's up. Terrible. Yeah. 
All right, so that's the end result. All right, so this is some foot shoulder that I had bought. Um, actually, I bought this at Costco. This is the uh, Costco um, pork. Okay, so we'll go, go ahead and just uh, quiet that for a moment. Uh, so uh, that was me making the marinade. The marinade is, again, that sweet soy sauce, something to add some acid. So I used a little bit of uh, the rice vinegar and a little bit of alcohol that helps uh, break down the meat proteins, break down the collagens and make it a bit more tender when it cooks up. Um, so just a tiny bit of alcohol, um, a little bit of that vinegar for the sour, some of the salt and the sweetness coming from that sweet soy sauce. And I added a little bit of that chili paste um, to make life simpler, or at least I hope a little bit simpler for me today. Um, I'm going to do these in the broiler inside here in the kitchen, uh, which is something I'm not uh, I don't normally do, so I'm hoping that it turns out okay. I ran a quick batch last night, which is why there's only four pieces of saute, and hopefully um, I managed to do that without burning it. Um, I got to get this broiler set on the lowest setting, and hopefully everything's okay. So, um, so that's going to be the uh, the pork saute, and uh, pork saute is not pork saute without some sort of peanut sauce. So we're gonna get started on peanut sauce right now. And uh, for the peanut sauce, oop, I have to move. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and change viewpoints again. This way you can see my food prep area. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop some peanut butter in here. And this is a brand new jar of peanut butter. So it's still pretty oily and I haven't done the full mix on it yet. So that was a little bit of peanut butter. And I'm gonna to add to that, um, I took some chilies. These are some Thai bird chilies that I had put inside of a little bit of uh, vinegar and a little bit of my dark sweet soy sauce. I'm gonna add that to my peanut sauce. So again, that was just probably for a quarter cup of peanut butter. I put in probably maybe a teaspoon of uh, vinegar, and we're going to put in probably close to a tablespoon of this dark sweet soy sauce. It's got the Thai bird peppers in there for the spiciness. It's got soy sauce, which gives us the saltiness. Peanut butter is a little bit sweet. Uh, the soy sauce is a little bit sweet. And I think we could go a little bit darker. Uh, I'm going to annoy some of you people because I'm not giving you good measurement because uh, I judge it by the color, and then after the color, then of course by the taste. So uh, that's pretty, as si pretty much as scientific as I get um, in cooking this type of a di uh, dish. Uh, and I'm gonna add just a tad bit of water. Hopefully this water is still hot for my kettle. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot water to that to get that to the right thickness, the right consistency for the sauce that I wanted. So we're looking for, uh, we want it to cling to the skewers of meat pretty easily without just uh, running all over and dripping all over everything. So that would be the peanut sauce consistency. And I'm just gonna set that aside for right now. And that's uh, for the saute, which is currently in the broiler hopefully heating up and melting all of that wonderful fat and warming up the, uh, the beef and the protein uh, for making uh, the saute sauce, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna transition over to my, uh, to my stove top. On the stove top right now, I have two things going on the stove top. I've got the wok. I've got the wok on my not my biggest boiler or not my biggest burner. I should have it on my biggest burner, but my biggest burner is a little bit too far out of reach for the camera that I set up today. So hopefully that all turns out all right. And I also have a steamer. I have a steamer going where I have some of the veg that's gonna go inside of the salad that I'm making today. So for the uh, gadu gadu salad, I have some baby bok choy, I've got some uh, snow peas, I've got some broccoli, I've got some carrot, and I've just got that over a steamer just to kind of wilt that or blanch that a little bit 
Uh, my mom used to just boil some water and put the veg in a ca uh, colander, and then that's how she would get that going, right? So I'm just gonna let that kind of sit over steam so that the, the veg gets a little bit wilty. So we, you know, it's uh, one thing about this gadu gadu salad is it's normally made with cabbage or I'm using the baby bok choy instead. And you want that kind of blanched. Um, you don't want it boiled because boiling would ruin it, but just a little blanching, a little bit of steaming uh, helps quite a bit. So now for the uh, fried rice, which again, I have to, uh, I'm gonna enlist the help of Clarissa and uh, Ray is gonna also be providing some commentary here as I'm cooking the, uh, <laughs> the fried rice. My brain is completely broken. Um, let's see if I, I have to rearrange my camera feeds a little bit here. Excuse me while I do this. I've got too much going on all at once on one computer. Oh, uh, there we go. All right, that's not bad. All right, so now over here on the lock, um, step one for making the fried rice, Clarissa, what's the first step we should do for the fried rice now that I got my wok kind of heated up? Well, I put in butter, but. Right, so we want some oh, sort of fat, right? So Clarissa's using butter. Butter is super uh, common in like Japanese. When you go to a teppanyaki, you go to, um, what's that place? The Japanese hibachi place? Shogun. Shogun, yeah, so some of those places, Benihana, that was the one I was trying to think of, they usually use some butter on that big flat uh, teppan grill for the fried rice. Um, I'm using a wok. This is a round bottom wok because I have a flame burner. And I'm just going to add a generous amount of oil to the bottom of the pan. Um, some of you might be wondering, you know, like, what if I don't have a... Uh, uh, a gas burner. Maybe some of you have a flat bottom wok, kind of like this one, because you have a induction heater or you have um, electric heat, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I could use this on a gas grill, but there's a there's a benefit to having the constant slope of a wok that we're going to learn about a little bit later. All right, Clarissa, what do I do next? Or Ray, what do I do next after I got some hot oil or some fat in my wok? Get the onions in there. Um, right. So the just onion a the for yeah. those who use butter, I'm using butter because I'm using a different style of fried rice, especially because my meat is different. Yeah. Butter okay. goes better with like less fatty things. It evens out the umami flavor because you get a lot of umami flavor from the fat that's in your meat. So using butter, if you have like tofu or I'm using stewed steak, which is a particularly tough cut of steak that you, you simmer in liquid for two hours. OK. Um, so right. I'm using the butter to balance out the flavors. All right. So hopefully everybody caught that. Right. So we're using uh, versus using the uh, the butter as the fat. That's going to add some umami, some savory flavor to it. And then Clarissa said that after, once we've got that hot fat in there, we're going to add the aromatics. Specifically, we're using onion. So I have, uh, let's see, which camera? There's my onion. And we're just going to get that nice and hot. What comes after the onion, Clarissa? Garlic. Oh, and so salt. Don't forget the salt. Pardon? And salt. Don't forget salt. Okay. All right. Um, I got some garlic inside of a garlic press here. Ow, 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 ow. Uh, once you add the garlic, you got to be a little bit careful because garlic is a little bit more delicate than an onion, and it has this tendency to get charred and a little bit bitter. Um, so you want to be cautious in how long you leave that uh, garlic in there on a, on a high heat. All right, so my aromatics are in now. 
What should I do next, Ray? I think like rice, probably. Right. You don't want the veg too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here, here's the rice. All right. So there's my overhead cam of the rice. Um, this is rice that I cooked a few days ago, and I just popped it in the refrigerator and I let it dry out a little bit. And you can see how nice and crumbly the rice is right now. Um, there are some people who argue very dogmatically about whether or not you should always use like day old or two day old rice versus fresh rice. Uh, the important thing is not the age of the rice after cooking. What's important is how much excess moisture is, uh, is left in the rice. So you want the rice to be relatively dry. So you don't want to have rice that's straight out of the pot or straight out of your rice cooker or your instant pot. Uh, without letting it breathe. So one of the things that uh, people hint at as a good option is to take the fresh cooked rice and spread it out onto a cookie sheet and spread it out into a nice even layer on the cookie sheet and just let it breathe. Or you could actually put a fan over it or just uh, wave, wave a fan at it and help it blow off a lot of that extra heat, that extra steam so that you have a relatively dry rice. So questions, comments, snide remarks while we let this kind of heat up for a little bit. Onions, so, man, what? Oh yeah, so if I was making this for James, I would have to skip the onions because onions are terrible. They are, the, uh, they are death and uh, James hates onions. And so James, you would have a lot of trouble eating over at my house because uh, I, I think I put onions in everything. Is that, is that true? Pretty accurate? Yeah. Eric, what kind of rice is it? Um, so I'm using jasmine rice. Uh, jasmine rice I usually buy in big old 25 pound bags from uh, Costco. Um, this rice I made inside of my rice cooker. Uh, and again, I, I used it for dinner a couple days ago. And then I just made a little bit extra and I filled up that to-go container with it. And that's pretty much what gave me my leftover rice. Um, basmati rice works also quite well because it's a medium to longer grain rice. Um, fried rice with a short grained rice, like a sushi grain or an arborio, is a little bit more challenging, right? So I, I find a medium to long grain rice for me is what I'm used to. But technically, I think you could use any rice. Okay, and what kind is Clarissa using? I'm using long grain basmati rice. Okay. Um, you can use um, brown rice, but I don't recommend it if you want to get a lot of flavor soaked into your rice. It just isn't as porous as white rice is. Mm -hmm. So the soy sauce will run off of it easier than it will with white rice. Is that one of the reasons you want it to be moist, as moisture free as possible? So that yes. it soaks up? Okay. I, I wasn't sure if I missed that, but okay. And, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. Cause so right now I've got the rice kind of spread out as thin as I can get it across the bottom of my wok. I've got it on high heat. The, uh, already the oil is pretty much covering all of this rice evenly. And now I'm letting it toast a little bit, hoping to again, get a little of that extra moisture out of the rice because uh, if your rice is too moist and you try to make uh, fried rice with it, you end up with this mush, uh, rice mush. And it's sometimes it tastes just fine, but it's not, not as pleasant. The mouth feels not great. And you might as well just turn it into porridge at that point by just adding more stock and just simmering it forever. All right, Carson, where are we at? Um, I'm just putting my garlic. I use garlic pods, which are like frozen garlic in oil because I live in an apartment. <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, while we were doing the fried rice and we got to a certain point, I just wanted to be able to pull this out. Uh, so here's what the saute looks like as it came out of the broiler. Right. Uh, 
I like to see the uh, the nice little crispy bits. And a lot of that fat that was on the meat that was kind of scary looking before, a lot of that fat has melted away. And so should make this kind of nice and uh, savory and buttery. Um, I think that could go underneath the broiler for just a tad bit longer. All right, where are we at now, Clarissa? Or Ray? What's up? When do you, pref when do you guys prefer that I add the, uh, the soy sauce and the meat and the veg? Um, I always add soy sauce last so that I can see if anything, like, so that it gets on everything. Okay. Uh, and also because I always add too little and then I add too much and then I need to let it cook a little bit. But, um, I, I also work with frozen a lot. So right now is usually when I add the vegetable and then the egg. Right. So if you're doing all veg, uh, fried rice. Right, it doesn't take a long time to cook that, so you could add that right now. Just get that heated up and toasty a little bit. If you had some meat that you're cooking, like for example, I have these uh, these little Chinese sausages that Clarissa and Audrey hate, so uh, <laughs> they're not home right now, so I get to use them in my in my fried rice. So because I'm adding that meat, I'm going to let that sit in the bottom of the wok a little while longer. And here's that benefit of a regular real wok. I've taken the rice and I've spread the rice around the outside of the ring. And in the center, I have the meat starting to sweat, right? So the primary heat is all right here in the center of my wok. And I can just push the stuff that I don't want to get overheated up the sides of my wok. And that's one of the huge benefits of having uh, a real traditional wok. Um, Clarissa is using a straight shot sided kind of a saucier which is what Clarissa has at home in, in the apartment right now. And that's gonna make making fried rice a little bit more difficult using a, a, a saucepan, a saucier like that, as opposed to a, a fry pan or a wok. My options were this or this. <laughs> yeah, so those are tough. All right. so. Uh, so I'm letting the meat continue sweating. I just added some more chopped up bok choy. So the same bok choy that I'm using for my gadu gadu. And I also threw in some tofu. Uh, the tofu is just fried tofu. So I went to the Chinese grocery store, me and Chin Mei's favorite place to go shopping together. Um, I went to the Asia Mart 168 and uh, bought some pre-fried tofu. So that's the, nice. the tofu that I'm using. And that, uh, that sausage that I put in there, right, it picked up a little bit of a char on the bottom of the pan. I kind of like that. That wakes up the caramelization, the Maillard reaction, and helps sweeten up that sausage a little bit. And now I'm pushing all of the stuff to the side again. Get up there, Mr. Bok Choy. I'm going to add just a tad bit more oil. And now I'm going to crack a couple eggs. Into the bottom there. A little bit of black pepper. little bit of salt and I'm just going to scramble the egg right into the bottom of my rice in my wok. Very scientific like. Uh, the egg is good because it makes the rice stick together and as we all know eating with chopsticks is more of a scoop a scooping problem than like a pinching problem. So like it makes the rice easier to eat, I think, when you have the egg in there. I've seen some people just scramble it in a separate pot. And I while that looks pretty, I'm I'm not sure about it. So I, I like I like this process the best. This is the based way to make fried rice. And it, it's also, you know, holding true to the uh 
to, for me, the premise of fried rice is all, all about, you know, trying to simplify my life and not make a whole bunch of dishes dirty. So making all of the stuff together at one time is very much part of my method and my process. So my egg is now fully scrambled. The rice is mostly done. Um, I'm adding some more veg. These are the little baby corns. And these are some uh, of the snap peas. Uh, I'm adding them a little bit later because they're a bit more delicate. As far as I don't want them overcooked or over steamed, I want those to still have some nice crunch to it. And now for the piece de resistance, we have the ketchup manis. Um, ketchup manis, if you can't find a reasonable Chinese grocery store that has the Indonesian or Malaysian sweet soy sauce, uh, my mom, when she used to have trouble finding or sourcing the ketchup manis, she used to take just the regular thin soy sauce and she would uh, put it in a pot, bring it up to a simmer and add one cup of uh, brown sugar to it. Yep. Broccoli. Perfect. Uh, she would add a cup of brown sugar to, if the bottle was about as big as this bottle of uh, unsweet, regular thin soy sauce, she would add maybe a cup, maybe a cup and a half of brown sugar to a saucepan, bring that up to a simmer to create kind of a simple syrup uh, based on soy sauce and the brown sugar, and then let that cool and then, you know, hopefully it gets to the consistency of good maple syrup. And I think my fried rice is pretty well, pretty well done. Uh, Clarissa, how's your, how's your uh, fried rice doing? Fine, I'm adding eggs now. I have okay. edamame and um, broccoli in there so far. All right, so one of the things that I'm hoping um, all of you from the ESI team are learning about this fried rice is that uh, it's super flexible. Uh, the ingredients that I'm using and the, you know, uh, maybe some of you are making notes and you're like, oh, Eric uses bok choy and uses snap peas. Uh, I really normally use just whatever's laying around in my kitchen or in my fridge, right? So Clarissa had that steak because the steak is what Clarissa made for dinner a couple days ago and then just throw the leftover steak in. Um, I've used leftover hot dogs from barbecues. If, uh, if you're using leftover hot dogs in the fried rice, um, adding kimchi to it makes it super authentic uh, Korean because South Korean food uh, is really based on uh, a lot of military army food. So you'll find in Korea things like kimchi fried rice with spam in it, kimchi fried rice with hot dogs in it. Uh, if I wanted to make this fried rice a little bit more Thai style, if any of you have had Thai fried rice before, you can take Thai fried rice instead of using the, the soy sauce only, you can take some uh, oyster flavored sauce. And if you take oyster flavored sauce and you dilute it with a little bit of the regular thin soy sauce, that will make a sauce that you would make a bit more of a Thai fried rice flavor also with. Also add basil, add basil. Yep, so if you have the Thai holy basil with that oyster sauce base instead of the sweet soy that we have, then that's gonna give you a lot more of that cow pad uh, cow pad prick kind of flavor that you're used to with uh, Thai fried rice. If you wanted to make the fried rice seem a little bit more uh, Vietnamese, then instead of using oyster sauce, you could use hoisin sauce and a little bit of hoisin sauce with some soy, then that would make it a bit more of the Vietnamese style. Right, and the Japanese use a lot of butter and they use a thin soy or a light soy. And light soy is not 
the color. Light soy is lightness as far as its texture. All right, so I've already got the heat off of my fried rice. Um, I'm supposed to be making the gadu gadu, the uh, the salad fixings. So let's shuffle my camera views around a little bit more. All right, so for gadu gadu, um, what I have here, uh, that is some of the fried tofu that I cut into lar larger chunks. Here are some potatoes that I boiled uh, last night and then just let cool back down to room temperature. They're a little bit firmer than what you would want for uh, like a potato salad, right? Uh, a worried level of stiffness. Uh, I have some cucumber here that I've just scored, uh, scored with a fork and then sliced up. And then I've got some hard boiled egg. From my steamer, from my steamer, I have now the the blanched bok choy. The steamed sugar uh, snow peas or snap peas, I think these are. Some carrots. And again, whatever veg that I have around, um, pardon my plating. Last time I cooked, uh, I made this salad. I was relying on uh, Chef Vikram Bapat, who is running the turn for me. Um, he is the one who normally plates my gadu gadu. He makes it look gorgeous. Um, my gadu gadu is normally ugly, but still tasty. So there is the gadu gadu salad itself. We have to start working on it's its own peanut butter sauce because I I, I didn't want to call this cooking episode you know reasons and excuses to eat peanut butter sauce but that's really all it is so again I started with the uh, the peanut butter we're adding that sweet soy sauce again. Uh, normally in a gadu in a gadu gadu dressing, sometimes you'd have lime juice and things like that in it. But because I was not a good shopper and I didn't get my lime, I'm going to thin it with I'm going to thin it with more water than I did with my saute sauce. And I'm also going to add a bit more of that rice vinegar. Hopefully I got this ratio kind of close. Yeah, it's a little bit thin. So I made I made the I made the sauce a little bit thinner than I meant to, so I'll just have to add a bit more peanut butter to that. Gonna kill half a jar of peanut butter just making one one meal. And just to mix things up a little bit, um, we're going to use a slightly different sambal. So this is sambal olek, right, which is a little bit different than the chili garlic sauce. Sambal olek, my mom used to make that in our uh, homemade in our kitchen, and it was like people were firing off pepper bombs in our house. Um, the stuff was so spicy and so uh, fragrant. It would just uh, burn our eyes out and we'd have to go running for cover. That's bad planning, Eric. Somebody provide me some good filler. So I'm not so trying to speak. Today because I made um, banana bread this morning, so all our dishes are dirty. <laughs> but um, here it is. The banana bread. Oh, it's still hot. Um. And I made this with my roommate. And then he went to school. Ow. So that's what I did this morning. How about you guys? That looks really good. All right, so here comes that Sumble Olek. 
Uh, pretty much the only difference between the sambal olek and the, uh, the chili garlic sauce is the inclusion of garlic. And I think the chili garlic sauce that's made by Hoi Kong, they're using a bit more of a dried chili and that for sambal olek, you use more of a fresh chili as the basis for that sauce. And that looks about right. That's about the, the thickness of the sauce that we like to make for the gadu gadu. So again, here we go. Let's see if I can fix all this plating up properly. We have the gadu gadu salad. Uh, again, there's really no science that I put behind it. Uh, I just have some relatively fresh, crunchy kind of veg in here. I've got the wilted green, uh, it's a bit more uh, flavorful and kind of bitter greens coming from the uh, cabbage family. Um, I've got the tofu, I've got the potatoes, I've got the carrots. And I have this peanut butter sauce, which I wanna have just a nice uh, smooth texture, similar to what you want as the thickness of, let's say your ranch dressing or your Thousand Island dressing. Then I have my fried rice. Let's see here. Oh, I know. It's the right tool for the right job. TV. And a little bit of the peanut sauce I like to have on my saute. And there you can see, not a great plating. I'm sorry, Vikram, I totally failed on the plating. I'm sorry about that. But here's the fried rice. There's the pork skulls or the saute. Um, important on the saute, right? You can see that nice brown crunchy bits and the blackened crunchy bits where the fat has now rendered out and gotten nice and crispy. Absolutely the best part of saute, uh, in my own opinion. Uh, and we got the gadu gadu and uh, yeah, that's pretty much my Indonesian picnic. What other questions, comments, snide remarks? It looks absolutely delicious. So when you have guests or when people are ready to eat, how do they grab the salad? Like what should they do? Oh, so so the salad, and again, yeah, it, it looks like it's kind of laid out here like a, like a dip thing, but really, uh, my mom would never dress it this way. She would never prep it this way. It would all just end up in a big bowl. People would pick it up with the tongs and put the dressing on it. So you would treat it the same way that you would prepare if you had done a chef salad or you've done an antipasto. You would just have kind of everything melanged, mixed up together, and just let people serve it to themselves. So if I had to plate up my own serving right now, I'd steal a couple of the potatoes. Some of the tofu, hard boiled egg, some of the greens. A smart person would have put the greens on the bottom because you know that would have made for a slightly better looking plating. So at the picnic, everybody's plate kind of ends up looking like this. Looks fantastic. It looks wonderful, Eric. Thank you. Hi, in case anybody's curious, right? Um, I just changed views again. So this is how I how I did this episode, just so you guys can see a, a little bit what's going on 
um, as far as the layout of the uh, the kitchen and everything. But hopefully you can see um, I have a music stand holding my um, laptop, which is yeah. where the webcam that I'm facing straight into is. I've got another lighting stand that's, that's holding up the webcam at my kitchen set area. Uh, I have a webcam mounted to my overhead fume hood. And yeah, so this is pretty much the setup of the kitchen in order to achieve uh, today's episode. I, I, I music stands on time, point. That's I? what I use to. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really awesome, Eric. Oh, and I'm, do, I'm using OBS. OBS is the application that I'm using, which is allowing me to change how these different camera feeds are all toggling to each other. Yeah. Wow. Not, and this is how we this is how we would Eric. set up the ESI studio. It's not in 4K, Eric. <gasps> and not no, no, that's not it's not in 4K. I know. It's, Even your daughters are reacting to this. They're like, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> how did you ladies? Fried rice. I, 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 I should have brought the RTX like, uh, machine home and then I could have. It's not like you don't that. have it's not like you're not Eric Cam with your handy dandy stack of you know video cards to help you with that. <laughs> Yeah. Can we talk about how many computers he has in his office? Can oh, we talk I... about that for a second? <laughs> his inventory is, I think, is higher than IT's at the moment. So, hey, I, I only I only have two kitchen. I only have two computers in the kitchen with me right now. Only two. We're, we're going to be selling some revenue to buy uh, more stuff. I mean, we could. Can, can Clarissa try, show right? us her rice? Clarissa, can we see your dish, please? Oh, see, she's got oh, a wow. Yeah, nice. nice. So this mm. is the steak that was stewed. A really good thing about this steak is that when I marinated it, I put um, onion in it, specifically green onion. Onion, along with alcohol, also breaks down some of the, the stuff in meat that makes it like a tough. So I don't know. Are you allowed to have alcohol? Stop. I <laughs> use <laughs> onions. Uh oh, big sister. <laughs> so, I'm just saying onions. Other here, your option over onions because you know onions are the devil. So I'm going to go with the alcohol. Good choice. Just saying. <laughs> Right. Um, right. Something else people use instead of that to get the sweet, sour, and that acid. There's some people who are not allergic to it and don't feel like it's eating their mouth while they're eating it could also use pineapple. Right. So that's why you see pineapple showing up in certain fried rices is that, um, right, the Thai use that. By using the pineapple, now you're adding some sweetness, you're adding some acid, um, and you're also using that to help break down the mouth. Preach. You can also use kiwi. <laughs> Not for Eric. <laughs> what? No peaches? Yes. Oh yeah, I, I forgot. So, uh, and string, string girl and string fellow were helping me cook all day too. You guys didn't oh even mention. Oh my goodness! That. Scary. That's sort of scary. And I'm wearing I... my dad. I'm wearing my dad's Indonesian <laughs> shirt. Right. So this is this is an Indonesian shirt called a batik. Um, and I also have another batik underneath my batik. Wow. So That's I, awesome. I went all out, fully Indonesian today. Okay, awesome. I do have to say that I said hello to String Girl. So she did not go unnoticed. String Girl. <laughs> um, so Eric, your mom, your your father brought this this culture. Did then your mom along the way, she just learned how to cook like this? Had she always, was she always a good cook? She just learned to do it more from your dad or um no actually so my my mom and my dad are both indonesian okay. or i should say we're, we're ethnically chinese indonesian nationals is okay what they were. so they they were uh chinese ethnicity and the families had immigrated to indonesia i don't know a couple of generations ago and uh so my mom's the one who taught me the formality of how to cook like uh -huh. here's 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 real method. Here's real technique. Here's how you're supposed to cook. My dad taught me. Uh, my dad's specialty was that we could go to a Chinese restaurant and somebody would 
sample him a dish and say, here's something special we made for you, Tony. And my dad would eat it and he could go home and he could reproduce it once, only wow. once. And then after that, we're like, hey, dad, make those shrimp you made again. And he could never redo it. So my dad taught me how to just, uh, through experimentation, through taste and stuff, how to just toss stuff together to make a food, make a meal. But I can't, my dad never taught me a recipe ever. My mom tried to teach me recipes with all sorts of super scientific, oh, just a palm full. A palm <laughs> is, that, that's like a teaspoon. If you, if you make it, your, you know, if you just do, do like this with your hand and you put a little, or actually this one, right? Do like this and put that much just to cover the palm in your hand. That, that's a teaspoon here. That's enough. And I'm like, whatever. So I apologize in advance. All of you, you're going to ask me, can you give me the recipes? I'm like, no, you add soy sauce until the color is about <laughs> right and it tastes right. Yeah, you, yeah, uh, that's what I put, cook. You put in the onion, how much you want based on the rice you want so that you want so many, you know, forkfuls to give you that amount of rice or that amount of uh, veg at a time. And yeah, yes, that's I, how you it, soul food. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. All, of the, uh, all of the veg I put in my rice was very purposely cut because again, we're a chopstick eating family in my house. Right, so. Michelle, I think oh. I heard that you were gonna do soul food next, uh, yeah? No, no, I said that's so how you cook soul yeah. food. You, you don't really well, I measure. I make all the chunks big enough to use chopsticks to pick. Mm. I am looking forward to the soul food episode. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no,
without using some shrimp flavored chips. Uh, I looked all over the Chinese and the Korean grocery store trying to find the shrimp flavored chip to, uh, to fry up from scratch because I wanted to show you guys how shrimp chips, if you ever had them as the uh, appetizer at a Thai restaurant, if you ever wondered where they come from, they look like little itty bitty fruity pebbles when they're uncooked. You dump them in hot oil and then they puff up into, into these things. And pretty much my whole experience growing up with Gadu Gadu was mostly just ignoring the veg and picking up the shrimp chips and eating the, uh, the peanut butter sauce with the shrimp chips. That's pretty much all I do. Okay. So, Tracy so where did you find what, those? Oops, sorry. What, um, Tracy had asked what the girls are studying. Girls, what are you studying? I'm finishing a degree in information systems. And you're in Massachusetts? I'm in Rhode Island. You're in Rhode Island. And Clarissa? Um, I'm studying communications disorders and music. I'm the one in Massachusetts. All right. Are you guys close enough to visit each other? Yeah, I'm going to go grab her this weekend. Good. Look, at that brings a smile to Dad's face. It does. Yeah. Well, because I'm mean, supposed to drive out this weekend, you? too. Oh. What are we going to do? I'm Apple driving out to you this weekend. Yes. I got to deliver the rest of the stuff that you didn't move out to uh, Rhode Island. So road trip. It's a big road trip for the Com family. Wow. And he's going to expect some banana bread and some fried rice with leftover marinated okay. meat. We still got two more bananas. <laughs> hey, I Eric, where did you buy the shrimp chips? Um, so I did find the fr these shrimp chips I found at H Mart, which is on 16 Mile and DeQuinder in Troy. It is, uh, it is the best. Uh, Asian grocery store next to 168 or actually I think it's better than 168 now so probably the best uh, Asian grocery store in the metro Detroit area in my opinion is H Mart on 16 mile into Quinder or there's the Asia Mart 168 which is, is at John R and 15. 13 and a half yeah hey is um is H Mart over by El Patio is that yeah that okay yeah and also by the house where I grew up, where my mom still lives. So if you needed to go pick her up when you shop, just let me know. Okay, we'll do. Actually, Jen, <laughs> I was going to see if you could pick me up some shrimp chips. Oh, <laughs> when you go oh, visit your mom. My mom. my mom loves <laughs> picking stuff up. She's retired now. She can, she can pick up and deliver. Excellent. Okay. Well. Okay, that's, that's all we that, got today. Yes, that's it. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much, Cam family. You did an incredible job. Yay. And, yes, Yay. yes and, and everyone, you know that this was recorded. You can find it in um, Microsoft.com, Teams. Streams. S streams. Yep, so I'm going to, uh, as soon as this uh, is finished recording, I'm going to stop it at the end of this call and I will put it in our Teams chat and then you will have a link to go in and view it. All right. Thank you all until next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Next time soul food. <laughs> Not. Bye. <laughs>